<laughs> Good morning. I'm going to change my blade before we get started today. Do that. Try to be safe. Good morning. My plates. Good morning. Good morning. Happy you guys are here. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm just going to change my blade before we get started because I noticed yesterday when I was using it, it was a little, a little not quite perfect. Okay. Hey, all right. Good morning. I am Teresa Coates. I'm the um, national educator for Shannon Fabrics. I cannot get these guys apart. You guys know how this goes, right? It's rotary cutter blades are scary. So I'm trying to be very, very careful while I do this. Um, I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and today we are back for another episode of Sew Together Tuesday. Today we're going to be working on cuddle pillowcases. So um, super easy little project. We're going to do that in just a second. Um, so last week we did masks, right? That was just last week. Um, <laughs> the time flies. Um, so last week we did masks, and we had uh, we had partnered with Hoffman Fabrics, and they gave away um, some fabrics. And then we also had partnered with Kaufman Fabrics, but because like Robert Kaufman Fabrics, but because the um, shipping system and mailing stuff right now is all a little difficult. Um, are we on? Is the mic working? Okay. Um, then we didn't get their stuff until later that day. So I made some masks later and I just wanted to show you guys because they were nice enough to send fabric for us to use for the thing. So this is from their new uh, Frida line. I'll show you guys. So this is um, some of the stuff from their new Frida collection, Frida Kahlo, uh, which is really, it's just beautiful stuff. So I love this like little napkin edge that they have going, um, the sugar skulls and all sorts of fun stuff and some Frida faces. Okay, super cute stuff. So I made um, a few little masks for myself out of it. This is one of my favorites. Should I show them the inside, the perfect little match that we got? Yes. So it's kind of fun because I cut this out and I really wanted her on either cheek. And then um, I tried to get the middle to match. And look at that, you guys. Look at that. It's so beautiful. I'm so happy with that match. <laughs> and I didn't even try that hard. It just happened to work. So that was great. So anyway, super cute fabric. I really love this. This is, I wish the mask could be reversible because honestly, I would have this on the outside too. So maybe I'll have to make another one. So anyway, so they are really cute. This was the fabric that they sent. I made some masks. I've been wearing them all weekend. Um, they're great. So let's do a check in on sound. A couple oh. of people are having uh, some issues and I'm not sure if it's local or okay. if, it's, if it's the world. Okay. So if you're having, if you're having issues with sound, let us know. We have a new mic today. I'm trying to see. Maybe I'll reposition. We'll see if we can get it to work. Do do do. Okay. All right. We'll give that a shot. Um, so let us know if you have any trouble with the with the sound. Yeah, because we're trying to. We got a new, um, a better mic supposedly. So we'll see if it works. All right. Hands um, free wireless. I don't yeah. Have to, we don't have to chase each other around. <laughs> right. Really. Yeah. So if you've been watching for a while, you know how we kind of like have to do this little tugging thing that happens as he comes around the corner, and we're no longer wired together. So um, uh, that's hopefully going to be better. We're getting a lot of positive. Feedback. Okay, sound, good. So most, so most folks are, are, okay, are, good. are having a good experience. Good, I'm glad. All right, so hopefully it's a little bit better and um, will, yeah, require us to do less tugging and pulling and looping around and all of that good stuff. So hopefully this will be better. So anyway, thanks to Robert Kaufman for the um, cotton prints. Very um, excited to have those and to be able to share those with you guys. They're really super duper cute. Um, otherwise, I'm trying to think if there was other things that I wanted to, oh, the, the Cuddle Cuts giveaway that we did, they'll be announcing the winners this week. Okay, they'll be choosing the winners, I think either today or tomorrow. They'll be announcing those winners, the winners who won the Cuddle Cuts from our Sew Together Tuesday. Those are getting shipped out soon. Um, all of those orders had to get put in individually and then shipped out, so it takes a little while to get them. But you will get them, and then I'll send you information on um, doing little classes with me later. Okay, so that's all coming down the road just a little bit. And um, I think that is all we need to catch up. So today we're doing the um, cuddle pillowcase and we're doing it with a couple of different, so we're doing it with cuddle and with the Lux cuddle fabrics. Okay, in the pattern it tells you how to do it with the regular cuddle. And um, the uh, pattern is downloadable. Do you wanna just put it down? No? Okay. Um, 
So this is a um, pattern that you can download from the website. Okay, so if you go to shannonfabrics.com and you scroll down to the bottom, there's a thing about free patterns and then you can download this pattern. All right, so the pattern calls for two kinds of regular cuddle fabric. You can use regular cuddle or you can use luxe cuddle. Either of them work, okay? And it'll come like this as a PDF that has both pages, all right? Um, so in stores, a lot of times you can get these just printed out already, but you can also download it from our site. And you can get this also from our blog. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog, I think is what the address is, they'll post it. Um, then you can actually download the pattern from there, okay? So once we have the pattern, we're gonna need to pick a couple of different fabrics. So I made some samples because this is what I do. And I try to figure out um, what's gonna work where and how's it gonna work and what fabrics we wanna put together. All of that good stuff. So the first one that I started with was this one, which is our, um, see if I can get the unicorns going the right direction. So this is our unicorn fabric. Um, be a unicorn, I think it might be called. And this is our embossed hearts cuddle, okay? So this is, um, it's not exactly a luxe cuddle, but you can see it's a, it's a higher nap, and then it's actually been cut out. So it's kind of an interesting embossing, and then it's not smushed down, but it's actually cut out, okay? Super duper cute. So that, I made this version to see how that would work. I made this version with the, um, be a more grown up version, I guess. Uh, with our state prints, so we have a whole bunch of new state prints that we're doing, and so this is with the Ohio one because Hawk is from Ohio. Shout out! <laughs> Yay for Ohio! Um, and this one is with the uh, Lux Cuddle Hide is what I used for this little cuff. Okay, works really well too. And then the last one I made is the way that we say to make it um and all of them worked really well and this one is with one of our um it's our new like i can't remember what this print is called it's a tool time sort of one um and then i made a gray so i'm going to flip this over because there's some spots on there i don't want you to see okay <laughs> so <laughs> i'll point them out later and show you what i did um so this is one with the cuddle and cuddle which cuddle Working with the regular cuddle is easier. It goes through machines easier. It's not as thick, all of that good stuff. Um, so I would recommend that you start with this one. Also, if you have um, grands or children who would like to learn how to sew or you're just learning how to sew, this is a great project to start with because it's super simple. It's a, just a few straight lines. It's not a lot of thickness and there's no real complexity in how we're gonna put it together, okay? So when I was doing this, I tried a couple of different things um, and I'll show you that I did some some top stitching, I did some serging, and I just did some regular sewing. We're just gonna sew it today, um, and we're not gonna do any of the serging, but I'll show you when we get to that point. I'll show you. All right, okay, so, oh yeah? Are we doing city and state? We, we are. And, and I was just gonna say, make sure that you're leaving your city, state, okay? Tell us where you're from. Um, tell me what you did this weekend. Um, we went out to the desert, which was super fun. We got away. I hope you, um, we got away from all the people in the desert, it was great. Um, so I hope that you got to do something enjoyable. We also did a little bit of grilling. Today, was that it? Okay, so today we're gonna work um, with the DIY style mat. So I wanted to talk to you guys about this just a little bit before we get started because you guys have asked a bunch of times, is that a magnet? <laughs> yes, it is a magnet system. So the, um, the cutting board that I have here, the cutting mat, it's a whole system that's been invented by a company called DIY Style. And um, basically it comes with this board and it comes with the magnets, which is bit this big thing, oh magnets. Um, and then um, the rulers, okay? So it's got all of these things come with it. The ruler is actually a 36 inch ruler, which I really love. And then it has one that's a 24 inch ruler that goes up and down, okay? So it, would ha it comes with both of those and it has the magnets. The thing I like about these rulers, one, that they go all the way across the entire board is phenomenal um, because there's not a lot of 36 inch rulers. And the other thing is that these guys sit in there and I'll show you how that works, but basically it holds the, holds the ruler much better because it sits with the magnets, okay? And then they just pop. So when you see me work with those magnets, that's what that is, is this board usually sits under the blue map um, because we've had some trouble with it with the camera. So today we're hoping that it will not mess up too much with the light and you can still see the fabric that's on here. So we're gonna give it a shot. New microphone, new mat, all of that good stuff. Okay, we're gonna try it today. Do you wanna, you wanna go take care of it? <laughs> I think you probably should. Put the camera down, let it focus on me. 
away, everybody. Because we have 17 IKEA yeah. things that are going to have to get built in the next two days. All piling up. Exactly. Exactly. So we have um, we have a room in the house that um, we're going to change into a studio upstairs, and so I'm kind of excited. So we'll have two different studios, and one will be for videos. And our IKEA delivery was supposed to come this afternoon at 1 p.m., and it sounds like they're here right now. So um, Hawk's going to go take care of that. I'll talk to you guys. So the fabrics that I'm using today, it's never a dull moment around here. The fabrics that I'm using today are our uh, military themed prints that we did. Um, we posted about them on the Facebook page and also on Instagram. So make sure you follow us if you are not following us there yet. Um, and we have a few of them. Um, will you grab the other, the other military prints that are there? The, the like, yeah, the Americana ones. Okay, so we have a couple of different ones. These are the ones that I just happen to have here in the studio with me. They're super cool. Um, I really like the colors on this one a lot. So um, it's just, you know, military theme for whomever you want to honor in that way. These are just some Americana ones, the stars and stripes. Okay, American flags, land of liberty. Super nice. I think it says home of the free, home of the brave, home of the brave. Okay, these are some of our digital prints, and then we have this one that has sort of more of the desert look uh, with the browns, okay? So um, we have a bunch of different ones. These are the ones that I have here. We're going to use the blue one because I really love that color. Okay, we're going to use the blue and the navy. So I'm going to use this as the body of the pillow today, and I'm going to use this as the cuff. Okay, this is just our regular navy cuddle, and then this is um, the military print. And I'm sure that Ellen can tell us exactly what this one is called so you can find it. Um, it's, really, it's really nice, though. I, they're very well done, so I'm very happy with them. So in the pattern, it tells us that we need to get um, five-eighths of a yard, and we're going to cut it down, and we're going to trim the cuff. So in here, and I have my little notes here, okay? You're gonna buy five eighths of a yard, just get a yard, and then you're gonna cut a 21 by 60 inch strip. That 60 inch strip is gonna be too long for the pillow. Okay, so once we do that, it's gonna be too long, we're gonna cut it down, and I'll show you that. All right, but 60 inches wide, if you remember, is the width of our fabric, right? So when it says 21 inches by 60 inches, that's just 21 by width of fabric. Our fabric is extra wide, okay? So the great thing about this board is that it fits the whole width of this fabric and I can lay my ruler across the entire thing, which is great. And why I wanted to show you it with today's project because it's particularly useful for this one, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna get this even on my edges so that my, basically my grain is straight Okay, so if I hold this up, if I don't have these even, and what happens is when you're, they're double enrolling it, it often gets twisted. And if that happens, I'll show you what it does. And it will sort of twist down there. Can you see at the bottom how it twists a little bit? What you have to do is you have to move your edges back so that they're more even until it folds nicely. Okay, so a lot of times across this top, and you can see that mine was the same way that it got cut off a roll and it is not straight across the top. And that's okay, because we're just gonna straighten it up. All right, so I'm just gonna fold it until it lays nice and smoothly across that fold. All right, this is where people get a little bit um, discombobulated might be the right word <laughs> okay that it cannot be it's not even all the time when it's cut and so that frustrates people and that they think that it's going to be straight but honestly um, it's real hard to get it perfectly straight across there because it's a knit fabric okay okay so make sure it's right okay so then I'm just going to even up that top as well as can be. So some of these are kind of nice, and this might be one that you would do that with, is that you could um, lay it out and cut across the lines. I'm gonna try to get that bottom one. It doesn't wanna go straight for me. There we go. All right. Okay, so this is gonna be the front of my pillow. So I'm gonna take my big, long ruler here, okay? I'm gonna line up this fold along a line on my ruler. So one of the things that's important to remember is that the lines on your ruler 
aren't um, always super accurate and they're not super consistent between brands. Okay, so one ruler may be slightly different than another one just because of the lines and the different measurements. So when you're trying, when you're working, and especially this is true when you're quilting, is to use a consistent brand of uh, quilting rulers with it. What I like is that it, the rulers come with this board so that they coordinate, but generally I don't use my board measurements to measure it all. I just keep it straight that way. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just gonna line this right up along that edge and I'm gonna take my big ruler and it's got like a little T-square down here that will sit right up against here, okay? So I can take this, line it up on one of these lines, get it to come across here. I'm gonna shimmy this so I can get it to be a little bit straighter, okay? Because Cuddle lets us do that. Okay, and I'm gonna line it up to my 17 and my 17 on either side, and then I'm gonna pop these magnets in here. Okay, and what that does is it holds this magnet, or the, um, the ruler in place for me, and does, doesn't let it shimmy, okay? So now I can cut this off. Okay, and I'm gonna hold my ruler just because I don't want it to move, and it's not foolproof when it's on there like that, but it's um, gonna stay much better. Okay, so now I'm gonna move this up because I wanna cut it at 21 inches. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this back. It's a little trick on how I, how I move it. Okay. And I'm gonna try to not move those cut edges hardly at all. All right, and then I'm going to put this back on here, down here, get those edges lined up so that it's going to come back down here at the zero line. Okay, so you're going to have to trust me that that's where it's at. Okay, I'm going to put my magnets back on here. Okay, there we go. So now I've got that, and now I'm gonna cut from this side so I can cut along that line. So now it's 21 inches, so here's my 21, okay? Here's my zero. I'm just gonna cut it off here. And let that fall to the floor, because that's what I do. Okay, so now I've got this piece. So now this piece is gonna be longer than I want it to be, because like I said, the 60 inches doesn't really work. Um, it's too long on the pillow is what it is. So it like hangs off the end of the pillow and looks silly. So we're gonna shorten this a little bit. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pull it up to the zero mark here. Okay. Can get that. Okay. So what I figured out is, and I, I wrote it on here, I think it's 54 inches is what I wrote. Yep, 53 to 54 inches works best. Okay, so 20 shimmy this around so it's straight again okay so 54 is going to be divided in half 25 27 inches okay <laughs> thanks for letting me do math guys okay so now i'm going to take this one that is right right <laughs> so now i'm going to take this ruler and i'm going to bump it up the same way okay i have a little shimmy that i have to do down there okay 27 27 i'm going to slide this back so that I can start my rotary cutter there. I'm gonna put these guys on there. Okay, so now I make sure that that's lined up. One of the things that I like about this is that I can lift this and I can move it. So I totally do this sometimes where I'll lift this whole thing up and I'll do another slice. So I can put those in here, put this down where I want it to be and I can totally move that. Okay, so even though it's stuck on there pretty well, it is uh, shiftable, okay? Make sure I've got all that. Pretty straight. What's right. that blue rotary cutter? What's the brand? This is just a, this is just an Ulfa one. It was their splash one. But they did send me this cute little charm. Look at that. It has like a little needle and a thimble. Super cute. Yeah, just changed the blade this morning. It's great. Okay. It's just one of their it's same like the yellow ones, except it was like a special anniversary edition that they did, I think. Okay. All right. 
So there we've got our scrap. So now I've got a piece that's 21 by 54 is what I have. Okay, so the pattern says 21 by 60, but I just cut it down because I wanted that body of the pillow to be a little bit smaller. Okay, so you can see I've cut the cuddle. So for anybody who's like, cuddle is just so messy, you can see that the mess is not so bad at all. Okay, just gonna give it a little shake. It's really, it's the Lux cuddle that gets us, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna use just regular cuddle today, but it's the Lux cuddle that's extra messy. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside for just a second and we'll cut the cuff. And the cuff, if I remember right, was nine inches. Yep, nine inches by 40 inches. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. This one I've already cut, so I know it's pretty straight up there. Okay. So I'm gonna lay it against my um, the fold against my line here so I can get this nice and straight and then I'll straighten this out. Okay, you can see the cuddle is heavy so it wants to move. So this is one of the reasons that I really like these things is because then I can actually like pop these guys down here and it won't fall off the table, which is great. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna use my long one again. Okay, so I guess I should save as much fabric as I can. I'm just gonna straighten this up right here, make sure it's nice and even. Okay. And then, oh, I got my scissors. <laughs> okay. All right, and then I'm just going to trim <laughs> this up. Those magnets are good. I know they came out with new magnets recently, too, that are even stronger. They have stronger ones, um, which are great for heavier fabrics. So, Okay, so now I've got a nice straight line. So I'm literally, what I was talking about before, I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to move it. So I need to go nine inches, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This line right here, the four. So I'm going to pick this guy up. I'm going to move it down to the four. Get that on there again. Then this didn't move at all, which is great. We just want that to stay there and keep where it's supposed to be, okay? It makes it a nice, even edge. If you don't have this whole system, um, you can just line it up. Just make sure that you're doing your nine inches. Measure that consistently across the edge. Draw your line and then cut it. Um, this keeps it nice and straight. When you've worked with Minky very much, you'll know that it, um, it does tend to move because it's a knit fabric. So trying to move it as little as possible um, while you're cutting it is really good. Um, one of the things that I do when I'm cutting with this, this you've seen, I've cut it right side up, okay, with the right sides out. If you're doing this with just a regular ruler, I would suggest that you fold it right sides together because the magnets hold it down nice and tight. Give that a shake. Um, but what happens is what um, the back of it is slick. So when I put these together and I try it with a regular ruler, it's a little bit more likely to slip and slide here when I'm cutting it and not be perfectly straight. So if you're doing this with just a regular old ruler and rotary cutter, I suggest that you fold it this direction, okay? Right sides together when you're cutting it. That way you can mark your lines here. So if you need to use a silver Sharpie or the chalk marker, whatever you wanna use to be able to mark that line, you can see that this will totally stick together. It kind of velcros together a little bit because the, the naps kind of catch each other and then it won't slide so much okay so you can cut it double double thickness with regular cuddle with lux cuddle i always recommend that you cut it one layer at a time with regular cuddle cuddle three you can do two layers at a time but lay them right sides together so that they kind of stick together a little bit okay all right are we good okay all right so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this i wanted a 40 inch strip so i'm going to take Get rid of my magnets. Okay, so now I don't want to move this too much. I'm just going to move it down a little bit so I can see it better. Okay, and I'm going to put this on the 30 inch line here on my ruler. Just line it up against that fold. It's going to come right along the line that I cut. Now I need 20 inches, so I'm going to come back because I need a 40 inch strip. So I'm going to come back 20 inches to 10 inches. Okay, so here I have 10, 20 inches, folded in half is 40. All right. Math is sometimes hard to explain. I hope that all made sense. Okay, so what I always like to do with these two is I put the magnets on either side of it so it holds it down a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut it right along there. 
And now this part I'm going to add to my scrap pile that I've got going here of six inch squares, okay, because this will go with this. All right, I'm going to add this to that and make some more six inch squares. And then I'm going to use that to make a, um, a pattern that we have called a sweet 16 pillow and it uses 16 six inch squares. So um, that tutorial is actually already on YouTube. You can find that one. If you, wanna, if you have scraps, it's a great scrap buster. Okay? Sort of like the sleep mask where it's like if you have a bunch of scraps, this is what you can do with it. That little pillow is called the Sweet 16. It's a cute little pattern. Okay, so now I've got my cuff. Yay. Okay, so now we've got the cuff and we've got the body of the pillow. All right, is everybody happy out there? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Davis is high. Oh, hi, Dava. <laughs> All right, so I've got my, this is, like I said, the body of the pillow, and I'm going to fold these right sides together, okay? Um, the way that I sew this is I'm going to start at the raw edge and sew to the fold, okay? So I'm going to pin both sides, and you're going to see how I do that. Most of the time, we start at, um, we'll start at the raw edge, go toward the fold because we don't want the fold to push and get these off. So we want to start even and then get off down there. Okay. So because it will almost always move at least a little bit. All right. So now I'm going to take these, get my edges to match. Okay. I don't want to pull this too much because you can see this is the stretchy we're dealing with. Okay. I just wanted to get it to match and not move it too much. So we're gonna do that thing that I like to do where we're gonna pin one end, then the other, and then subdivide it um, until it's pinned all the way across, okay? I'm gonna pin one side, I'm gonna do the double pinning. So if you're new to working with Minky, this is a great way to start is with the double pinning. Um, and then the other side, I'm gonna use pins and clips um, and show you how that works as well, okay? So I'm gonna pin here, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna just sort of brush along here. I'm not pushing, I'm not stretching, I'm not pulling it. I'm just getting it to lay flat again. So if you kind of need to pat it, you could do that. Um, don't stretch it at all. And then I'm going to pin it here. Okay, so now I've got my ends and then I'm going to do the middle. And then I'll do in between there. Okay, and these are my clover pins. The flower head pins are the ones that I recommend um, being the best to use for this. Okay, they're just, they're easy to grab and they're nice and sharp. Clover makes the, the best ones, in my humble opinion. Okay, so the way that I have pinned is that I pin, I'm right-handed. So if you're right-handed, you should always pin further away from you because what we want to do is we want to pin from where we're going to sew down so that when we're sewing, we're going to hit these pins first, the end of the pin, and not the head. Okay, so a lot of times what people want to do is they want to pin closer to them. And if they do, they end up having to take the pins out weirdly while they're sewing. So make sure that you're pinning further away from you. If you're left-handed, you'll pin it this way and it will work totally fine. Okay, I hope that made sense. All right, you can see I didn't pin a whole lot because I'm working with digital cuddle. Digital cuddle doesn't slide as much. It's a thinner nap, so it's not as wiggly. Um, if I were doing this out of Lux cuddle, I would definitely pin a lot more. Okay, so now I'm gonna pin this side. I'm gonna show you how I do it with the clips. All right. So I'm still gonna pin the beginning and the end because I want them to really stay where I want them to be. Okay, I'm gonna pin that there. And I'm gonna pin this one like I normally do. I wanna get that nice and flat. Okay, and you can see it curls up and it wants to move. I'm just gonna keep rechecking it and making sure that those edges match. All right, because it's gonna wanna move. That's just the nature of the fabric. Okay, if you try to fight that too much, it's just a, yeah, frustration. All right, so then I'm gonna come along here and I'm gonna put some clips in. And I, you can see, I'm just gonna keep working these to make sure that those edges match. Put some clips in. I wanna use the bigger ones. I've got the little teeny tiny ones. You saw I put one back. It's just the, these little guys. Um, they're better for other projects. Okay. They make all the sizes of Wonder Clips. Okay, so now I've got my clips in there, but what I've found when I've tried to be lazy and just clip it is that it doesn't hold it well enough. It still wants to move. So I do the clips and then I'm going to do my second row of pins. Okay, so this doesn't work. This manner of the clipping and the pinning doesn't work for a lot of things like the strip quilts. It doesn't work for, um, but things like this, it absolutely will. So what I'm going to do is that second row that I would normally 
have pins up here and then pins down here. I'm just going to have pins and clips. Okay. And that way it keeps this, um, in, which is what it will want to do. All right. And this row is going to stay in. So when I do the double pinning or the clips and the pins, this row of pins stays in. These come out. Okay. So the same thing is going to be true over here is that this first row is going to come out and that second row is going to stay. All right. Um, I think that's it. I think they weren't going to sew. All right. Let's get you over here. Okay. Okay. And I took my shoes off today because they were uncomfortable. <laughs> so sorry. Let's try not to get my feet too much today. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so I have my machine. I, the crescendo is what I'm sewing with today. I've got it set up to a three stitch length. It's um, with the Mettler thread, the polyester. I think this is Mettler. Yep, it is Mettler. Polyester thread, 9014 stretch needle, all of that good stuff. I'm using the baby lock so it has the um, digital dual feed on it. Okay, um, and I'm going to sew this at about a half an inch. Okay, so it'll be a little bit less because that's the way I tend to do it. Okay, and I'm going to put this so that it's all the way underneath the foot. So it's really important. I'm gonna grab my stiletto here. Um, so it's really important that we're starting in just a little bit because as you've seen before, if you've watched, if we start up here, we're real likely to get this to suck down into the machine and we don't want that to happen. So we're going to start forward just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to back stitch and then I'll go forward and that helps it to not um, get pulled into the feed dogs. All right. So I'm just going to stitch all along here. So you can do this with your machine. Just do a regular, regular old stitch. On the other one, I did it, and um, then I went over it with the serger, and then um, and that worked just fine. But I feel like it's um, it's one of the things that really just kind of makes it look nicer if you're going to give it as a gift. It doesn't add any functionality to it. Okay. So I'm going to take these pins out, and you see I'm leaving that second row in, and then I'm trying to keep this nice and straight as it goes. Okay, and I can use my stiletto to sort of guide it, make sure those edges stay nice and even. Okay, just keep wiggling it around, get it to come through. Okay, sewing with cuddle is not a race. It's, uh, it's not even endurance. What am I thinking? It's you know, it's just just take your time. Do your little zen thing. Yeah. All right, so as we come down, I'm going to take out this pin and we're going to get to the end and then I'm going to back stitch over that fold. All right. So you can see that held it in place really nicely. Okay. All right. Did just fine. Oops. There we go. All right. So now I've got it. Now I can take these other pins out because I don't need them anymore. Okay, this stitch length. I hope you guys can see this okay. That stitch length is really good. It's longer than you would normally have for um, when you're sewing with quilting cotton, but it makes it so that it can stretch just a little bit and it's going to be fine. Okay, so the threads aren't going to pop and I don't have to do a zigzag. All right, so now I'm going to come around and do the other side and show you how that works with the, um, the clips. So part of it that I, you saw, I pinned this one um, perpendicular to the edge, which I usually don't. I do them on the edge to keep this together because I wasn't going to put a pin here. So I just put a pin to hold these edges together. So when I get it under the foot, it's a lot easier. And then I can take this pin out. Okay. It's really just a holder is what that is. So I'm going to do my little back stitch. Do you have any questions there, Hawk? So we're doing all right. We're doing all right. Yay. Half inch, half inch seam allowance, right? Half inch seam allowance. Yep, and I'm just going to come along here. And because this fabric wants to kind of stick together anyway, these clips are going to work. And you can see it lets it so that that side isn't going to move at all. So this can't go anywhere because of those pins. Okay, and I can sew just right next to them as long as I'm not going to hit that head, which is going to be close. So the difference between the flower head pins and a regular ball head pin, one of the, one of the nice things, right, is that it do doesn't get stuck under your presser foot. Right, I don't have to take it out. I can slide over it if it's in the right place. Yep, exactly. So, great comment. Yep, totally. Because yes, the ball heads are um, nice. I have some from Bowen that are really nice and strong, but yeah, I have to take every single one of them out because they, they can't go over it. And then sometimes, I don't know if this has ever happened to anybody, the ball gets caught like in here in your foot and you don't realize it's there. 
Yeah, that happens to me sometimes. It's not a happy moment, okay? But you can see these are flat enough that, yeah, I can just slide right over it. I'll take the wonder clip out as I get to it. Okay, works really well. So like I said, the wonder clips work great when you're working with regular cuddle, okay? Just flat cuddle, cuddle three, whatever we wanna call it, okay? The thinner nap, that's what we want. Um, when we're working with the Lux cuddle, we wanna use the pins, we wanna use the double row of pins more because it's a little bit harder to control. So if you um, have been working with Cuddle for a while and you feel like you wanna use the Wonder Clips, just make sure to do that second row of pins and it will make a big difference. Okay, so I'm gonna take these pins out. Can you tell us what, um, uh, what makes a stretch needle a stretch needle? Uh, the difference with the stretch needle is that it does not have a pointy end. Okay, so a universal needle will have a very sharp point. Um, I wish we could show, like, I need, there's, um, there's a lady who, Rhonda, who does a bunch of these. Um, she's the one who works for Schmatz, and she explains a lot about these needles um, and how they work. And she has a big, huge needle that she shows, um, which is great. But the universal needle, which is what a lot of people use, has a very sharp end because it stabs through your fabric. A Microtex has an even sharper point to it, which we don't want for sewing with knits because we don't want it to break that thread so that the I guess it's a different word but the the thread that makes up the knit is actually kind of does this sort of thing through it it's not a weave okay so what happens is if you get that it'll make a bigger hole and so you don't want to pierce those fibers of the fabric so a ball point or a jersey will go through it a ball point has a rounder end and has a different scarf but a jersey needle a stretch needle and a ball point needle will all work really well with knits okay and it won't it won't pierce the fabric the actual like threads of the fabric was that, <laughs> was that maybe too much information? Okay, no all right. So yeah, it is important. There's a difference in the actual, the tip of the needle and the scarf of the needle, which is that part that comes like the scoop behind the hole of the eye, okay? So that part right there is called the scarf and they do them differently for different um, threads and for different fabrics. That's the magic that I don't really understand, but I know it exists. All right, so now we're going to sew this guy together. So this is our cuff, okay? And actually, we'll sew this together and I'll do, um, I'll do the zigzag on that so you can see how that works too. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Um, I find that the pins, I kind of, I like them for little things are just easy to stick in. So I tend to use them, but this would be another place that you could use the, the Wonder Clips if you wanted to. Um, so you can see it wants to pull this way, so I just kind of push it forward with my fingers, get it to be where it needs to be, all right? So we're gonna sew this, and then I'm gonna zigzag this edge, and I can show you how I do that. All right, so let's do that. And I'm gonna do this the same width, the half inch seam allowance, okay. So I'm gonna do a little back stitch. And you can see I used the black thread on this. Um, with on the, the navy, it's not gonna be a big deal. But the other, it's not gonna be a big deal either because it's a print on the other side. So you'll never be able to see it, even though it looks white from this side. Okay, so if I were going to um, do this and give it to somebody, I would probably do my, the zigzag that I'm gonna do in um, white, but I'm gonna do it in black. Um, so you can see this is a black thread, totally hides in the navy, you can't even tell. Crazy, okay. Reasons I love cuddle. That's, that's a blog series we should do. Reasons I love cuddle. He's in 4,963. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on a zigzag. So this is, will basically just hold these edges together is all that's gonna do, okay. And I'm gonna get it to where I want it to be. I'm gonna do a little locking stitch. Okay, and now I'm just gonna zigzag this right along that edge. I'm gonna try to come off. Whoops. See, it's gonna flatten it there. So all that does is just make it so it's a little bit of a neater edge. I'll show you the inside of the other ones that I both zigzagged and then I surged. And I left blank, I think. It wants to curl. Okay, so when you're doing the surging, you'll wanna make sure that you, um, well, you don't have to, but I don't cut it off, okay, because I don't want all the the cuddle mess in my serger. I feel like it gets messy enough as it is, so I don't I don't use the cutter. Ta-da! All right, 
So all that does is just hold down the edge nice and flat. So if you did this all in white, you wouldn't be able to see it and it would be, it would hold this nicer than this is here. So this is just, you know, an open raw edge. Totally workable, makes no difference in functionality. Um, it's just a little bit more finished look if that's what you want. Okay, so what did I do? Oh, there they are. Let me show you really quick with the one that I did. So this one I left plain, it ends up folding open. Okay, this is the one that I did with the serger. Okay, I did it with the white thread. So it just kind of neatens up that edge so you can't, you know, see the print so well. I think this one I zigzagged. Oh no, this one I did the serger too. Okay. So it just gives it a nicer look. If you're doing it for a gift, it's, you know, kind of a nice thing. Um, this, the zigzag or the serge works really well. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's no, no hard and fast rule on that one. Okay. Uh, okay, so now I've got my body of my pillow. I'm just going to zigzag the one edge because it doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to turn this out. And I'm going to get those corners to pop out nicely for us. Okay. So um, part of it, you can't really feel it, but you could sort of see there's a little lip here. We want to get that corner to come out nice and flat again. Okay, so I don't trim the corners, but I get it nice and flat, and then it will lay nicely. Don't let it bunch up in there. All right, so now I've got the body of the pillow, and I've got my cuff. Okay, so one of the things that I found, you asked me if I had my silver Sharpie, and I was like, no, I don't need it. Guess what I need? The silver Sharpie. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things that I found is because Cuddle likes to sort of shift on us, um, when you're doing this fold over thing, it's easy to get it to um, shift out of position. So what I want to do is I want to mark the half point here. So this is my fold. Okay, so I'm just going to hold this down. I'm going to mark and mark. Okay, so that's my half is what those are. I'm going to do it the other way too. You don't necessarily have to do all four of them, um, but it'll keep it in check a little bit more. So now I, I'm lining up my mark with the seam and the mark with the seam here. Okay, I'm going to pull it real gently and find my quarter marks. Okay, I'll mark it again. And that just helps me so when I fold it in half, and I'll show you why, when we get there. Okay, one more. There we go. All right. So now when I fold these in half, I can get these matches, these um, marks to match up. And I'm going to pin right there. Okay, what tends to happen when we're folding this is what I realize is that it would come over like this and it would be off just enough. So even if it's off a quarter of an inch, what happens with this fold is it starts to get a weird. Um, the slant this way. Um, you've probably seen that. It happens sometimes with the self-binding blankets. Uh, and it's just because it's a knit and it's not quite on grain perfectly. So it'll sort of like slide this way weird. So I try to do those marks so that I can get this fold over nice and even. Okay, so make those marks match. Just pin it into place. So that's gonna be our first step is to get these this all folded in half. Okay, I'm gonna get my seams to match. I'll pin it there. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. One more. Okay. And you can see it doesn't naturally want to go there. So we kind of have to force it. I did find that makes a big difference in the getting the cuff to lay nice and flat. So once I get it to this point, I can lay it down and I can see if it's working. If I'm getting any weird pulls in it or anything like this. This is working just fine. So now I'm going to put it onto my pillowcase. Okay. So now I'm just going to find one of these side seams. I'm going to use the one that I didn't uh, zigzag. So one of the things about um, not zigzagging it is you can lay it out flat, which makes it a little nice. It's not quite as thick right there. Okay, so now I'm going to try to match up all of my seams. I'm going to pin through all the layers. Okay, and I'm actually going to use a pin on either side of this because it's going to want to, it's going to want to shimmy. Okay, and I want that to stay there. So then on this side, I have my half seam, and that's where my pin is. Not half seam, but you know what I mean. The other side. All right. And then I'll pin there. So now I know that I have to get this even all the way around. All right. So now I'm just going to pin this. 
and get it nice and even. So what I'm going to do, and if you can, you can sort of see this wants to pull down in the back. So the whole time I'm going to kind of just work this back up and get it on there. And as I pin, as I go around, I may have to um, reposition things and that's okay. And I'm going to pin this direction for right now because I'm going to pin uh, in between and then pin harder. Okay. So basically this is just my like sort of loose pinning right now. And then we'll, we'll pin more. Okay. So I really like this project. Like I said, it's a great beginner project and it's um, especially easy if you do it with this just regular cuddle. <clears throat> And we have a lot of them. We have over a hundred different colors of the solid, and I don't even know how many prints. A lot. A lot, a lot of prints. Okay. So basically get that even, and then I'm gonna come back around and pin it again. All right. Are there any questions out there? Yeah, okay. what um what do you know about the burrito method for selling your Oh, I know the burrito method. It's great and it works super well for cotton. <laughs> 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 um, th it doesn't work as well for this because um, <clears throat> it's just so thick. So it's really hard to get it to roll up underneath that thing and pull it around and do the stitch. It's just a little bit harder, okay? This one, I did try it, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So I can vouch for it that this one is a little bit easier to do with the thick fabrics, okay? Um, and next, we, next week, actually, we were talking about this. Um, so I'm going to make pillows that match the quilt that Hawk and I did. And I'm going to mix that with um, cotton and cuddle. And I'll show you guys that next week. And then we'll show you the quilt, too, that we did. Um, but that'll be a mix of the cotton band with the cuddle body. So um, I wanted to see how that'll work. And so it's a good excuse to do it. Okay. But yeah, the burrito method works really well for cotton, not as well for cuddle. All right. So I'm going to pin this, and I'm pinning a little bit further down, um, and I'm going to add some clips in here too. Okay, make sure that it is staying where I want it to, and that I don't have quite so many pins to take out if I don't want to. The little bitty, oopsie. That's what happens when you mix your wonder clips. Thankfully, the big ones are too big to go in that, and I can't do that. Wonder clips are kind of my favorite. If you ever, um, if you ever buy a new package, there's information on there too. These little lines back here, you guys, these are actually different measurements. Okay, so one of these is a quarter of inch, and I can't really see which one it is right now, but I think it's this back one. But there are different measurements on here for um, when you're doing your quilting. They actually have um, a lot of smart behind them. The bigger ones are like that too, that they have measurements for quarter inch and half inch. I think maybe even an inch. Um, I feel like they're one of those tools that we often just buy and then don't ever read the packaging for, but there's actually some good info in there. Okay. All right. Put that pin down here. So I like putting the pins where I won't um, have to take them out, but that they still are very effective. Okay. All right, so we got all the way around. So now this is nice and secured on there and I'm just gonna pin or sew this all the way around the same way, okay? I wanna make sure that I got that. You could see it, it kind of flipped over and I clipped it down and that kind of happens sometimes. So I wanna make sure that that lays out flat, okay? So just trying to catch it. So here's one, here's a good example where it pushed it down. Try to move that and make it flat. All right, so let's take it over here. So this is a, um, this is a spot that you could take off this this table part if you wanted to. I'm not going to because mine is, um, my pillowcase is big and it doesn't, um, it doesn't scare me to put this around it. But it is definitely, if you wanted to, you could take that off and be slightly easier to sew. Okay, so you saw I had to take that wonder clip off because it gets in the way of the, um, the digital dual feed. So I had to move it um, and then it can go under here. So if you're using the pins, those will slide right underneath the digital dual feed. All right, I'm just starting randomly somewhere in here. Oops, I don't want to zigzag anymore. Okay, let's get that fixed. All right, now we'll do a straight stitch. And I'm just gonna work my way around until I come back over there. All right, you can start at a side seam or you can start wherever. All right, I'm just gonna sew 
all the way around. So this is one place that um, when we're done here, we're gonna, we're gonna zigzag this because I found that the three layers together works, uh, lays a little bit nicer when I um, zigzag them together. And the same would be true if you're using the Lux Cuddle, is that you would wanna zigzag that, make it nice and flat, okay? So like I said, we're just using a straight, sti straight stitch three millimeter stitch length. If your machine is having trouble bringing it through, you wanna lighten up your presser foot pressure. You wanna lengthen that stitch, okay? A lot of times in classes, we end up having people that have, you know, four, four and a half stitch length because that's what their machine needs. Okay, so at this point here, I've got a lot of bulk. I've got, I don't even know, layers of cuddle here, okay? So I'm gonna, Use my stiletto to sort of hold it down and push it through. Okay. And then I'm gonna check it. I can see under there. Yeah, I think I got it straight. It looked like it might've gotten a little bit of a pucker. So we'll see when I come around. Okay. I was trying to feel it and it looked like it might have, but maybe not. All right. And we're just going to keep working around. So when you get to those humps, make sure that you're using your stiletto or use something to come around or to push it down and make it work underneath the foot. This time it's, you know, it's working just fine with this. This just sort of guides it. <clears throat> but when you're going over the big humps, your machine will definitely struggle. Um, and if you have to, you can just hand crank it over that. Okay. So this is sort of wants to bulk this way, and you'll notice if you work with Minky very much, it totally does that, okay? So I'm just gonna hold it in place, make it sew down. Don't let it keep coming forward because it's never gonna go back unless you force it to go back. Um, otherwise, it's just gonna keep building that pucker forward, and we don't want that to happen, okay? So you can see I just keep rearranging just like I did the other way. I'm just gonna sew some, and rearrange to get it to go in as straight as possible, okay? that's a little uneven and it bothers me <laughs> okay all right so we're just gonna sew all the way so now I'm at another seam here okay so I'm gonna hold that down as it goes under there just let it sort of take it all right there we go so I'm coming back around here's my here's my spot where I started so I'm gonna aim this needle for this line okay so I'm gonna watch this for a little bit and then I'm gonna watch that and make sure that the two of those meet up. Okay, so now I'm just gonna aim straight for that line. I'm gonna overlap it just a little bit on back stitch, and then cut my thread. Okay, so now I can take this out, can look at it, okay? Super nice and neat. All right, let me see that one little spot that I thought I might have gotten a little. Oh, look at that, guys, I did. I got a teeny tiny little pucker. Okay, usually I'm like, let's keep it, but you know what? <clears throat> I haven't shown you how I take stuff out, so let's do that. And I'll show you how I fix it. All right, where is my blade? There we go. All right, so, <laughs> you guys have been waiting for this. Somebody asked about it politely. You keep saying you're gonna show us. <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine, let me show you today. So what I do, I'm gonna take these pins out because I don't want all these pins in here stabbing me while I'm working. So I'm gonna take the rest of these out. And I'm gonna come back over here to where that little pucker is, okay? So you can see it back here pretty good. It's just a little one. It's really not a huge deal. Um, and honestly, I would probably leave it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my little blade here, okay? And I'm gonna come under here and I'm just gonna pop that one little stitch, okay? So now what I can do is I can come in here. I'm gonna pull this. Got to do this with the, the camera is hard. Okay, so then I'm just going to kind of tick in here. Okay, this works super duper well for Lux Cuddle because I just kind of like eyeball it. You can, or like, yeah, I mean, you can see I just kind of feel it and then I put it. Don't push too hard because this is a blade. You can totally cut through your fabric. Um, but especially with the Lux Cuddle, there's so much extra fluff on there that it's not going to catch it. So you can see that's that was a super easy little take out of those stitches, okay? Super duper simple. Um, and that's all we have to do to get that to come out and lay flat. 
so much easier than if you use a seam ripper and try to get under each of these stitches. I mean, I can't even see those little individual stitches. So what ends up happening is your seam ripper catches the, the fibers of the fabric and cuts those, which is what we're trying to avoid. All right, so now I'm gonna take this back over. I'm gonna pin this here and I'm gonna start up here where I can see it and make sure that that pucker doesn't happen again and give it a little stretch as I'm sewing. Okay, because what happened is because there was so much thickness here at this um, seam, Conjun uh, junction of all these seams is it got kind of piled up and pushed this. All right, so we're just going to even that out. Was that good? Are people happy with the knowing how to take it out? Oh, yeah. Good. I know it's really like honestly taking it out is probably one of the bigger struggles that people have and it's really pretty darn easy. Um, yeah, that blade works, works wonders for it. Um, there's also a thing called a Kai seam remover that works really well, or just a box knife. Okay, so I'm gonna use my stiletto a bunch here and push this down and through, because I want this to go and I want it to go evenly. All right, so I'm just gonna work this, make sure things are where I want them to be. Do, do, do. That wants to move and I wanna shove it back. Okay, and I kind of give this just a little bit of a tug with my thumb back here and get it to work through. Okay, we'll overlap that and it should be fine. Yep, look at that, all gone. Ta-da, beautiful. Look at that, my seams even lined up, that's awesome. Okay, so now I've got it here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this back around. We're just gonna zigzag a big zigzag all the way around this edge, okay? And that just makes it lay flatter because this is a lot of bulk um, that does kind of act weird. And what I found is that if I zigzagged it first and then I top stitch it, it actually worked really nicely, okay? So I'm just gonna start randomly. Oops, not with a straight. It just doesn't change automatically and I don't understand that. <clears throat> Can it read my mind? <laughs> Com you know, the computer systems in these sewing machines are pretty, pretty impressive. Okay, I'm going to cut that little thread. All right, and then I'm just going to zigzag all the way around here. So I'm just going to keep, make sure that this doesn't get caught up underneath because um, I can feel it wants to do that and I'm not going to let it. So I'm just trying to zigzag, zigzag down those three seam allowances, okay? So I've got the white and then the two pieces of the blue. And basically all that's doing is just flattening it. Okay, and that will come in handy in the next step. So five, five millimeters, is it? Yep, five and five, five wide, five long. You could do it um, smaller, wider, thinner, whatever you wanna do. Um, but I'm just trying to hold it at this point, so that's all that is. So this is another place that I did um, a, uh, a surge on a couple of them just to see how that would work. Totally works. So if you got a serger, it's a great place to do it. Um, like I said, I just did it with blade down. So I changed my blade so it wasn't cutting anything off. It was just flattening it. Okay, so now I'm coming back around. You can see that this is nice and flat. I could see I was coming up to it. Backstitch just to lock that thread and take it out. Okay. All right, so now I've got that zigzag down. So you can see it's just a really big, I didn't even do it super neatly, okay? But what's getting, from this side, it looks nicer. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this. So at this point, you could be finished. In the pattern, it tells you to top stitch it. So let me show you the difference. So this is one that I, I surged, okay? that I did the Lux Cuddle, so I wanted to serge it and get it a little bit flatter. I did not stitch it down, but you could absolutely stitch it here. <clears throat> when I did it, this one, I did that, I turned it, I surged it, and then I turned it, and then I top stitched it. And that's what I'm gonna do with this, was I'm gonna top stitch it and show you that, okay? I also top stitched it up here, which I really like that. It adds a crisp edge to that that is really nice, that doesn't need to be done on the Lux Cuddle, because the Lux, or this is the embossed, but it's a nice, um, it creates a nice edge for itself, okay? And if you top stitch this, it will look kind of weird. So I didn't top stitch this at all, I left it blank, 
you know. But this one I did. In the pattern, it says to top stitch it on the cuff next to the edge. I'm going to find the place that I did it. There it is. Okay. I did it, and it, you can see the little holes from where I took out the stitches. Um, and I could just fluff this up with the... Um, the stiletto and stuff, I just haven't done it yet. But what I realized is that I didn't like the stitching there. So in the pattern it says to top stitch the cuff um, on this edge to lean the, the seam allowance that way. And I think I'll be rewriting the pattern. Um, <laughs> I like push the seam allowance this way and top stitch it here and I like that better. Okay, so here is what it looks like without the weird top stitching in there. Okay, and then the top stitched edge here. So we're going to top stitch here, top stitch here and then we'll be finished. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna sew around this guy, okay? I'm going to do one thing that might seem sort of weird, but I'm actually gonna pin around here just a little bit so that these two layers stay together and flat, okay? Because they're gonna wanna shift a little bit and I don't want them to. Okay, so I'm gonna, sorry. Use the pins that I was using before, okay? So I'm just going to get it flat, stick a pin in here, okay? And you'll notice that with every one I'm doing, I'm sort of like getting it flat and then sticking a pin in to keep it. So if you're struggling at all with it moving, remember that pins are your friends and that they will keep it where you want it to be, all right? And as I'm sewing this, I'm not pinning my seam allowance toward the body of the pillow. I'm just leaving it there. Um, but I'll be able to feel it because it's so much thicker and make sure that it's actually over there. Okay, so thinking that I might show the other foot, this guy. Okay, so this is the stitch in the ditch foot or edge stitching foot it's called. Okay, so that this guy is a nice little um, ridge that I can run the edge along. So I'm going to change this to a straight stitch and then I'm going to move this. See if I want to move it that way. Yep. Okay, and I can move it three millimeters over. Okay, Let's see if I can do it. 3.5. Yeah, 3.5. That's what I'm going to do it so that I'm going to run the edge of my seam line right along there. Okay, so I'm going to run my seam right where this guide is and then it will keep it nice and consistent. Can I get any bigger? Nope. Okay. So I want to see where what the what the tap out was there. Okay. It's at 3.5. So I'm gonna keep my hands here so I can keep this nice and straight and get an even um, top stitch around this. Okay, so you can see that that's just gonna run right in that seam. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure that this is being pulled so that it's not going to get a little pucker in here and too much, too much this way and you'll get a weird little thing there. So I want to keep this nice and flat as it's going and sort of helping it guide through with my hands. Okay. And we're just going to do a little bit at a time and feed it all the way. And then we're going to do the same thing with the top. Okay, it'll make it a really nice sharp edge on it, give it a nice finished, finished feel to it. All right. So like I said, you don't have to do this part, but it, I did find that it makes it look much nicer in the end. It's a much better finish. Okay. So this is a super great project for all sorts of fabrics. You saw, um, you could do it with the, the Lux Cuddles for these bands. You could do a Lux Cuddle for the whole thing if you wanted to. Um, you just need to make sure and do lots more pinning, but the Lux Cuddle is makes a beautiful pillow. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use my little stiletto here and get this smashed flat and get it to work underneath that foot. Okay. And then I can give it a little tug from behind and work it through because you'll notice those parts that get really thick. The machines don't always love it, so you got to kind of help it. And sometimes, like I said, that means just hand cranking your hand cranking your machine too. Okay. It's like I didn't up the stitch length on this. That's why it's so short. Okay. So 
So we're just gonna work our way all the way around. Oh, and the winner today, I forgot, I forgot to tell you guys. So the winner today, we're gonna give you a couple of yards of fabric that'll make two pillowcases using the um, fabric that we're using today. Okay, we'll send you a little, um, a variation. I'm not sure if we'll send you the exact one. So you can let me know if that's what you want if you win. Um, and then for more, so the guys who make the blue scissors that I use, I'll show you in a minute. Um, they are gonna send you scissors, which I'm very excited about because they're my favorite little scissors for using, um, for cutting, especially Lux Cuddle. Okay, so now I've got that whole little top stitch done. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I'm gonna use this little guide and I'm gonna top stitch just the top edge. So the other one, the gray one that I showed you guys, the top stitching on it is bigger because I used just the edge of my foot and I did that on the Bernina. Um, so just the edge of the walking foot. Okay. So you can see the fold of the fabric. I'm just making sure that this lays nice and flat as it comes through here and that the fold is running right along that, that little edge. Okay, so to keep it nice and consistent. That's the the key with top stitching really. And so that little bar down the middle is what makes all the difference. And so if you have another machine, um, I have this for the Bernina, I have it for my old Foth. Like this little foot is, is pretty universal. When I taught kids classes on, Bernina is called, it's the 10 foot is what it is. Um, and I used to teach kids classes at a shop in Portland and the kids called it the Wonder Foot. So it's always sort of had that that name for me in my head. But it's a great one because it really does keep things um, nicely even. You can do a beautiful top stitch that will amaze people. And they'll think you're so talented that you're able to keep it that even. You just smile, nod, take the compliments. Okay, so now I'm coming around. I can see my little thread here from the beginning. So I'm gonna come back over, stitch over that back stitch and then cut my thread all right there we go all right so now I will clip my threads if I can find them okay from my start and my stop okay clip those threads all right so now you can see we have a nice little top edge doo -doo -doo. okay it'll hold it nice and flat here which is um, the purpose of that. I was gonna show you. So this is what I did on this one. I used my, the Bernina and I used the uh, edge of the walking foot. So it's a little bit more, this is uh, closer to a quarter of an inch. This is a little more than an eighth of an inch. Um, so depending on what you wanna do, same idea. And I just used the edge of it and just lined it right up. Okay. So it just gives a nice finished edge to your pillow that um, I think just makes it look a little bit a little bit nicer. All right. All right, there we go. Okay, ready for nap time. <laughs> so now we got all the pillowcases. Here you go, you're gonna slide your little pillow in. Ta-da! Okay, it's a perfect little gift. So if you haven't, um, if you haven't made them before, it's a great one to make. This would be a fun thing to make. You could make a couple of matching pillows and then make someone a throw that went with it. Um, be really cute. You could do um, the self-binding blanket. So if you haven't made a self-binding blanket, those are super great. And you use one fabric in the middle and a fabric on the outside and it kind of comes around. Um, I feel like that like, would be such a cute little set with a pillowcase and then the self-binding blanket that matched. Um, you could do whatever you want. But I think it's really cute. Cute little project. I'll hold it up for you guys. Ta-da! Okay. Super duper easy. So this was one variation. Like I said, we've got all these other variations that you can make. Okay. And next week I'll do it with the, um, the cotton and cuddle and I'll show you how that guys, that worked too, guys. Okay. Um, all right. So do we have uh, information from Ellen about a winner? Because this project was so easy. Yeah, we got it. Yay! Okay. All right, um, uh, so the winner is, oh, these names. I tell you, it's either the names of cities or the names of people, and I just don't know all the names, but I'm gonna try. So the winner is Pat Krasnowski of Perry Hill, or Perry Hall, Maryland. Okay, so Pat from Perry Hall, you are the winner. So we will send you, we'll, um, if you can 
uh, message us at Shannon Fabrics through our uh, Facebook page, then we'll get your information, we'll get your mailing address, and we'll send you a couple yards of fabric so you can make your own pillowcases. We'll give you enough to make two. So you have a little set, and um, and then Fomori will actually send you the scissors yourself. So the um, oh, can you can you grab the little blue ones that are in there? Sorry, I should have grabbed those before. These are my well loved versions. Okay, so these are the scissors they're sending in some little clips that I'm not sure where they are at all. Um, <laughs> but they're the little smushy ones that are great. But these scissors are my favorite for cutting the Lux Cuddle. Okay, they're super good. They're called Razor's Edge Comfort Handle Scissors or something like that. Um, but they have the micro serrations here that grab the cuddle really well. Um, and so this is what I use, especially when I'm making um, stuffed animals or anything that has like little curves or more intricate um, cutting on the Lux Cuddle. These work great. Okay, and so thanks for Maury for um, partnering, with, partnering with us for that. Okay, um, all right, so Pat's the winner. Yay, we're excited. Next week we'll be back. Oh, let me, hold on, hold on half a second. Let me grab it. Look, I can wander off, Hawk. Okay, this is exciting. The last time you had to follow me. Well, wait, wait. <laughs> He's still here. He'll hold down the fort while I'm gone. So this is what we're gonna do next week are these um, June t Taylor. See if we can get it without too much uh, shine. Uh, they're June Taylor pre-printed battings. Okay, they work really, really well for working with cuddles. So you've probably seen them in the store. They're just quilt as you go, but that's what all of our blankets are. So it's a really great combination. This is an older um, bunch of prints that were ours as well. Um, and we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna give this one a try this week, which is the square and the square one. I'm gonna see how that goes. And then we're gonna do this one next week, okay? And then we'll give away um, some quilt batting and some fabric for that too. So join us next week when we do the, um, the quilt, okay? And if you have any questions for that, let me know. And I'll try to answer them all during our video. And is that it? Are we good? So. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. It was great. The pillowcase is a super good project for you to start with if you're just working with Minky. And if you are super comfortable with working with Cuddle, you're going to whip these things out in no time flat. Great, great gift. So, yeah? Hey, was there something uh, you were talking about making a couple of pillowcases for the house? Was it, were you going to match something? I was going to match our quilt. Yeah. So we made a quilt. Hawk and I did a quilt. And uh, yeah, next week we'll show it to you. Can you see it from here? <laughs> there it is. There it is on the wall. We'll talk about that next week. It's backed with cuddle. Make some cuddle matching pillowcases. It'll be super fun. So we'll talk about that and how we, how we made it and how we got it quilted. So we did a little bit of that too. So uh, we'll talk about that next week and we'll make this quilt and it'll be super fun. So until next Tuesday, happy sewing. Bye.